Fiat's back on form with this characterful 500X small crossover model. It's bigger than it looks and there's lots of choice when it comes to engines, drive systems, transmissions and a whole stack of personalization options. If you're looking for a surefire conversation starter, you can't do a lot better. One of the advantages of choosing a 500X in this segment is that it offers a decent range of proper four-wheel drive options for the few customers in this segment who will want it. Most buyers though will have an only occasional need for extra traction, something that can be covered off by this car's neat drive mood selector system, operated by this rotary dial down by the gear stick, as well as dynamic sport and auto settings that tweak throttle, steering, stability control and gear change response. This setup offers a mode that gives even two-wheel drive variants extra traction in slippery conditions. It's called all-weather, or traction, depending on the model you select. As for engines, well, petrol buyers get an entry-level 110 brake horsepower e-torque unit, but green pump fuelers are better served by a 140 and 170 brake horsepower version of Fiat's smooth 1.4-litre multi-air power plant, the latter available with four-wheel drive. Both these units can also be ordered with the high-tech 9-speed auto gearbox. You can also have on the top 140 brake horsepower 2-litre multi-jet diesel that I'm trying here. Another 500X variant available with four-wheel drive. Further down the diesel range, there are 1.3 and 1.6-litre multi-jet units, respectively offering 95 and 120 brake horsepower. Whatever your choice of engine, handling is taut and body roll is well controlled. The payoff for a firm ride. There aren't too many small crossovers with styling that gets an almost universal vote of confidence, but we really haven't chanced upon anyone who doesn't like the 500X. Designed in-house by Fiat's Centro Stile Studio, this model not only has clear links to its siblings and the current 500 family, but also to the iconic 1957 original, most notably when it comes to these large circular headlamps, the bright work on the nose and this distinctive clamshell bonnet. Cross and Cross Plus models like this one get the full urban SUV look with extra plastic cladding, roof rails and chunkier bumpers with skid plates front and rear. In short, all the calling cars you'd expect to find from a vehicle of the Duke genre. Raise the tailgate and you'll discover a 350 litre boot capacity. Push forward the split folding 6040 rear bench and a thousand litres of fresh air will be freed up thanks to seat backs that fold almost completely flat. Sit yourself at the wheel and it doesn't initially feel very Fiat 500. What's delivered here is as different from that little city car as you expect it would be, this being a larger and more expensive design. Some semblance of familiarity is maintained by a smattering of 500 model line design cues. Things like the quirky metal door handles, the hard round head restraints, the boiled sweet like buttons and the pull bore style gear knob that you get on manual gearbox variants. This model branded body coloured plastic dashboard facing is a familiar touch too. Although the enamelled surface that you get on cheaper versions is preferable to the sandpaper style finish applied to plusher models like this. This panel surrounds what is arguably the cabin's most eye-catching feature, the 5-inch Uconnect infotainment touchscreen fitted to all but entry-level versions and expanded to 6.5 inches in size on top variants like this one. Anyway, time to take a seat in the rear. <clears throat> Once inside, there's reasonable room for three. As usual in this class of car, room for your knees and legs is at a bit of a premium, pitched somewhere between the space you get in a Fiesta-sized Super Mini and a Focus-sized family hatch, but it's fine by segment standards. In terms of the combination you'll probably need of efficiency and all-round performance, there's a clear sweet spot in the 500X lineup, and it lies with the 120 brake horsepower 1.6 litre multi-jet 2 diesel variant. Here's a unit that's just as clean as the much feebler 95 brake horsepower 1.3 litre multi-jet diesel, delivering 109 grams per kilometre of CO2. Yet, it can easily enable you to tow, take you to 62 miles an hour in around 10 seconds, and waft you about on an easy wave of torque. 
You can expect very good economy too, 68.9 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. Though this 500X draws upon the heritage and history of Fiat's 500 model line, it doesn't depend on it in the way that previous spin-off models have done. Even if you had no idea what the original 500 was, you'd enjoy this car. It looks good, it drives well, it's decently equipped, and it comes with a pretty efficient set of running costs and is anything but boring. Combine all of this with clever connectivity, practical versatility, and the prospect of fashionable personalization, and you can see why Fiat's hopes are high for this car. It has the X Factor.